Valentine Malvin Stresser accidentally seized power in Celarion on April 29, 1992. Stresser had been unknown army captain until that day. He was newly installed as a leader of a nation of 4 million people and the commander-in-chief of a fractious poor army at the age of 25. Most Celarionians welcomed the coup makers and Stresser was elevated to Messiah status. After more than two decades of corrupt government, print shops all over the country designed out calendars with his childlike face stamped on them. The inner circle of the party was made up of similar young men including a vice chairman who was just 22. They named themselves the National Provisional Ruling Council and their rule was marked by the type of peculiarities you would expect if you walked into a college bar and handed over country to a bunch of students. Here is a complete story of Africa's youngest president, Valentine Stresser, who ascended from rugs to riches and back to rugs. If you're new here, please subscribe to our channel and press on that bell icon so that you can always get a notification every time we upload a new video. Valentine Malvin Stresser was born on April 26, 1967 in the Celarion capital of Freetown. Stresser grew up in Allentown, the neighborhood of Freetown's extreme east end. Stresser graduated from Celarion Grammar School in Freetown in 1985 when he was 18 years old. He was a gifted student in math and chemistry in high school. He enlisted in the Republic of Celarion Military Forces at the age of 18 after graduating from secondary school in 1985. During the presidency of President Siaka Stevens, he was assigned to Bengume Military Training Academy in Bengume, a town just outside Freetown for military training as a cadet officer. He was commissioned into Celarion Army at the age of 19 after completing his training. On March 25, 1991, the Revolutionary United Front RFP, a rebel group led by Fadi Sanko, launched its first attack in Kalaun district. Stresser and other soldiers who were stationed in the military barracks in Kalaun were dispatched to command and put down the RUF uprising. During Stresser's time fighting the RUF rebels, the government of Celarion led by President Joseph Saidu Momo hardly provided enough boots and military equipment to the army to help strengthen Stresser and his fellow soldiers in the war. The soldiers were never paid on time and their welfare was far from the top of the government's priority list. After numerous appeals, warnings and threats, the young soldiers decided to march to the state house in Freetown on April 29, 1992 to protest their setbacks in pursuing the war and to demand their outstanding salaries. Stresser led the group of soldiers along with his two best friends and fellow soldiers Sergeant Solomon Musa and Captain Saa Sandy. President Momo was forced to flee the country after the soldiers appeared in the capital city and he went into exile in Conakry, Guinea. Stresser and his men were motivated to seize power by forming the National Provisional Ruling Council NPRC, in response to the power vacuum. The coup leaders were so unprepared that they didn't appoint a new leader. Stresser was eventually chosen not for his leadership or martial authority but because as one of the few who had finished secondary school, his English was good enough to read the junta declaration over the radio. They all agreed that, if nothing else, a young lad could instill youthful optimism in a frustrated nation. Stresser became the youngest head of state in the world at just 25 years old. After becoming president, Stresser set about implementing grand plans to establish a functioning democracy. The soldiers organized a cleanup campaign to clear the streets of mountains of trash and many of them participated. The economy was improving, gas and electricity were once again ready available, ambulances which had all vanished from Freetown were imported and put to use again. Optimistic once more, young people spread morals of inspiring slogans and the national heroes across downtown in Freetown. There was talk of a long time awaited revolution finally blooming, but it didn't take long for the excitement to wear off. In December 1992, after only eight months in office, the government declared that an attempted coup had foiled. 29 accused men were executed by firing squad on a beach outside Freetown. Some of them were in prison at the time they were allegedly plotting the coup. The stories of extravagant state-funded lifestyles were equally despicable. There were stories of Valentine Stresser and his close military friends selling diamonds worth tons of thousands of dollars and spending the money on brand new cars. 
In October 1993, a Swedish newspaper reported that Stresser and other officers had flown to Antwerp, Europe's diamond capital, with smuggled stones worth tens of millions of dollars. Some of the funds were used to purchase weapons for the army's floundering forces, while the remainder was divided among officials. The article was shocking because it came at a time when Celarion earned less than $2 million per year from legitimate diamond trading. By 1994, Stresser had clearly failed to control the war brewing in the east against the revolutionary United Front rebels. Initially, RUF rebels were fighting to unseat the corrupt government, but it became clear during Stresser's reign what they stood for. Diamond deposits had become a resource worth fighting for in their own right. By 1995, Stresser disappeared from public life. The rumor was that he was drinking heavily and abusing cocaine, and he didn't appear to be in control at all. Stresser's government struggled to control growing protests over the next year, facing equally intense international pressure. Stresser decided to hold elections in February 1996. However, by running as a candidate, despite the constitutional minimum age of 40 years, he aggravated existing leadership schism within the party. A few weeks before the election, Stresser attended a routine government meeting with Mada Bayo, his second in command. He entered the conference room without his armed security detail, so there was nothing he could do when Bayo grabbed a gun from under the table and pointed it at him, according to his own story. Stresser was put into a helicopter and taken to neighboring Guinea. Stresser was ousted in a low-key military coup, but this time it was his own party members who were unhappy with his leadership. While in Guinea, Stresser was offered a UN fellowship to study law at the University of Warwick in Coventry, England. However, his presence at the university did not sit well with the student body, which included some students in exile from Celarion. Some teaching staff expressed worries that he was involved in atrocities and breaches of international criminal law. Stresser dropped out of university after only 18 months and began floating around streets of London, frequently clashing with Celarion expatriates. Stresser's asylum application in England was rejected in 2000, and he fled to Gambia only to be denied entry. He finally returned to Celarion, where he lived in poverty in Grafton, east of Freetown, on a small pension of only $42 per month. He became severely ill in January 2019 and was transferred to Ghana for treatment. Due to peripheral artery disease, his left leg was partially amputated. He returned to Celarion in July 2021 after completing rehabilitation and was given an apartment by President Julius Mada Bayo. Surprisingly, President Bayo, with whom he had a strained relationship, was the one who oversaw his medical bill in Ghana. Despite the fact that Valentine Stresser's reign did not end well, he will always be recognized as Africa's youngest president, who ruled Celarion from 1992 to 1996 at the age of 25. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next one. Peace.